This is the Mac Mini that has been rumored for the past two years. And this is what we got. Yep, but it's not all that bad. If you found this video by it being suggested, I do all things related to Apple, the good and the bad. If that sounds like your thing, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and of course, turn on notifications so you don't miss a video when I upload it. Thank you. It's been two years since Apple introduced the M1 Mac Mini, which I ordered on day one because I needed something to hold me over since I was waiting for the 27 inch iMac to be refreshed. That never came. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Instead, I ended up using that M1 Mac Mini until July of this past year, 2022, then I ordered the Mac Studio. Now, I was also constantly reading how Apple was rumored to be redesigning the Mac Mini pretty much since when I got mine towards the end of January. Yes, it took that long, two months. <sighs> I put sole blame on John Prosser of Front Page Tech, who apparently looks like my younger brother? Wrong. I look way younger. In fact, he's my daddy. Wait, that sounded so much better in my head when I wrote it. We got beef, John, you and I. Because on May 25th, you posted this. Mac Mini is actually super excited. Now, hang on, all right? Before we say anything else, I just want to point this out. Ports, okay? In all its glory, the redesigned thinner Mac Mini with all of the ports. All of them. Then, in April 2022, you did this to me. We've got a brand new Mac Mini with an M2 chip, which of course would be the same as that MacBook Air. Oh, and we're not done. Again, later in October, more of the fabled Mac Mini redesign. And Apple would just be printing money with the new M2 Mac Mini. So yeah, that's what you can expect to happen next month at this event. But doing this video, I realized you didn't show the rendered one. I should have known. You knew. You had the inside track. Why? Because a couple days ago, again, brushes over the leaks and say, Of course, same design, but like, does that matter really? It, it, it's fine. Did Timmy get to you? Tim Cook. Tim Cook is a wizard, confirmed. It's not happening. Tell me it's not so, man. Are you going to be sponsored by Apple in an upcoming video? What happened to my redesigned Mac Mini, Jern? This is not this. Mm. Is my cool plug. You hinted at new colors. Well, you hinted. You didn't say, I mean, you said they were looking at it, but I'm still blaming you. Where? Where are they? Okay. Calm down, not really that mad, it's all good. After all, he's made mistakes before. Oh, oh no! I I'm, I'm totally kidding. I love you, John, I'm a big fan. If you love or watch FPT, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below if you think we look like brothers? What? Okay, to business. We finally got an update to the Mac Mini. Now, there is so much added, but at the same time, not so much. Let me explain. Apple did give the Mac Mini the newest, latest and greatest M2 chip, which is, I mean, come on, that, that's expected at the least, right? However, the 2020 Mac Mini started at $699. This one, $599. They lowered the price. What? How? Where did they cut corners? Let's let's see it. Now compared to the base M1 Mac Mini, which was two years old by the way, they went from the M1 chip with eight core CPU, eight core GPU, to the newest M2 chip. Still the same eight core CPU, but they did bump that GPU to a 10 core. The base storage still is 256 gigabytes of SSD. Now, as far as the memory goes, yes, it's both listed. They start off at eight gigabytes of memory, but a deeper look reveals that an increase to what eight gigabytes can do in the M2. We're gonna do some nerd numbers here. Now, they used the LPDDR4 for a peak of 85.25 gigabits, and the M2 upgraded to the LPDDR5, 
which boasts a memory to 100 gigabits. Gigabytes, gigabits, gigabytes. Gigabits per second. God, I always mess that up. What is that? I think it's gigabits. I don't know, D don't quote me on that. Th these are the jokes. Does that make a huge difference? Mm, for most, probably not. However, if you're gonna do some heavy lifting, it could stop that occasional stutter that might actually frustrate you if you were still using the M1. So maybe? Now, of course, non-upgradable SSD and memory after purchase, so that's not a surprise because they stopped doing it with the M1. There's no need to even discuss it or even get angry about it. It, it is what it is. Now, as far as ports go, which I ran out on day one on my M1. Boy, that was, yeah, I, I got an external thing for that. Great, yeah. And I got the most storage you could, but, you know. Now, nothing has changed with the M2 Mac Mini. Wait a second. You lowered the price and you kept the same ports? I, I don't know about you guys, but I would have paid an extra hundred bucks to get some extra ports because we still have two Thunderbolt ports. Now, they're Thunderbolt 4, which is fine. HDMI 2.0, really? 2.1 would have been better. I mean, that's the late, whatever. And of course, two USB ports, which ironically, I can't find if they're 3.1, 3.0, or 2.0. <sighs> What, what, whatever. You know what? At this point, just cut them out and, and give me all USB-C, right? I mean, come on. Let's just, just, you're already making us use freaking dongles and stuff. I mean, hey, we got the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack still. However, no SD card slot. Even though the MacBooks got them back, the Mac Studio got one. Come on, Apple, we were going down a good road here. At least I can use two monitors. And I can hook up my two 5K monitors to the Mac Mini, right? Right? I looked everywhere, and I'm not sure if you can or not. However, this would be one of those instances where I would suggest waiting and seeing till we actually see people start using this. Should I pick one up and try it with my two monitors? I mean, who else? better than me. I, I mean, I'm sure there's other people that are way better than me. I mean, I'm not saying that, but I've got it. I, I could try it. What do you guys think? Now, I've stated this many times in the past that a base spec would probably be perfect for 99% of the people of the world. The M1 would probably still be a hell of a computer for most people today, and you could probably find it cheaper if Apple adds it to the refurb store. Now, I, I checked, I don't see anything yet. I also checked Best Buy. Eh, just, eh, I just stay away from that because if you go to Best Buy, you pay more, which I don't get it. Now, let's see what you get if you pay a little bit more because it's always about paying more, isn't it? I mean, come on. First things first, while the body redesign of the Mac Mini didn't happen, the M2 Pro chips get four Thunderbolt 4 ports, so two to four, so yeah, HDMI 2.0, and two unknown USB-A ports. While that is exactly what the redesigns look like on the back, I, I guess that's, I guess that's, that's good. I mean, it's a good thing, yeah? Now, you'll have to pay $12.99 for the base model M2 Pro to get this. Now, let's jump back a second here because the minimum specs for the baseline M2 have increased. For comparison, I maxed out my M1 Mac Mini with 16 gigs of RAM, two terabytes of storage, and because I bought mine too early, they didn't offer that 10 gigabit ethernet for 100 extra dollars. I mean, I would have paid for it. I don't even have the machine anymore, and I'm still angry about that. My total cost was $1,674.80 out the door, also with three years of Apple Care. In 2019, when I ordered it, did you buy an M1 Mac Mini, or did you pass? Go ahead and leave a comment down below if you bought anything and, and, and what you bought. Now, if this was the only option, which we'll talk about that in a second, I would still max out the specs and do 24 gigs of memory, two terabytes of storage, and yes, I'd pay that extra 100 bucks and get the 10 gigabit ethernet port. Plus the three years of Apple Care, I'm dropping $2,117.88. $500 more, and I was so annoyed not having enough internal storage. Uh, I'm glad there's other options, but you know, hey, what can you do?
I guess I would have to look into the external storage SSD and try to go with something a little faster, but man, that 24 gigs of uh, memory, that I would definitely want to try. However, this time around, I would have some decisions to make. Do I future-proof my machine because Apple has put in a higher M2 Pro chip into the Mac Mini. Now, just so you're aware, back in July, I got rid of the M1. I got the Mac Studio. I decided to get the M1 Ultra, but not the 64 core GPU bump up. I, I did stay with the base 48 core GPU. I upped the memory to 128 gigs, and yes, I got four terabytes of storage. That was a lot up front, but I don't regret it one bit because I have not one external drive hooked up to that machine. So out the door, I paid $6,326.08 with AppleCare. I was also heavily debating the M1 Max spec version, but I decided to go big. Future-proof, you know, the whole future-proof thing. That's how I sold it to my wife. I don't think she heard. So if I decided to not do the Mac Studio and I kept my M1, I would definitely seriously consider the M2 Pro Mac Mini. Now, the first option is right off the bat, they have two variations of the M2 Pro. Do I pay an extra 300 bucks and get a CPU and GPU bump? That's a tough call. Now, because it's not the Max chip, I would probably upgrade and definitely gotta do the 32 gigs of memory. Storage? Eh. I did two terabytes already, and, and it wasn't enough. So I would do the four terabytes of storage this time around, and yes, the 10 gigabit ethernet, so I could plug directly into my NAS server. With three years of AppleCare, I'm dropping $3,601.88 out the door. Whew, that's a lot. But I mean, this machine would last a long time. Well, un till John Prosser drops another leaked render of a redesigned Mac Mini. Now, in, in, in all seriousness, if I was gonna drop that kind of money, I would do the same thing that I did with the Mac Studio. I watched every video on it for about four months before I decided what I was going to do. I would do the same thing with this. Now, if I wasn't using my M1 as heavy as I was, I would 100% not be buying a base M2 or a Pro, and neither should anyone else if you just brought an M1 Mac Mini and you're not pushing it to the extremes. Save your money. Now, if you didn't pull the trigger on any Apple Silicone since 2020 and you're looking, it's a pretty darn good time to go ahead and see if it would help you kind of move up or if your machine was slower to the M2 Mac Minis. Now, if you want any advice, go ahead and leave me a question in the comment section. I'd love to kind of work through it and see where you're at. Now, if you're looking for more great content, go ahead and check out my video I did on the knockoff wireless charger that Tesla was attempting right there. And if you enjoy my content, feel free to hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you don't miss a video when I post it. Have a good day. A light turned off somewhere, I wasn't sure.